Just tell me when we got off. Well, guys, we've managed to come across to Arethus and catch up with Tingana. Now, he's just walked past me, so I'm trying to just turn around quickly so that I can actually follow him. Craig, are we all right there? There's a big bold I see, but looks like we might be okay. So there he is on the road there, just walking up ahead of us. So he, I think he's moving and slowly going towards Red Dam. That's where I think he's going now. I do apologize if I don't answer any questions. I currently cannot hear a thing. We've got no comms with final control, so we're trying to, to see what's going on. Rusty has just decided it doesn't feel like working this afternoon. And so all of a sudden, in the last one second, he's now just gone quiet. Now the interesting thing is is that where we are currently is there's a group of impala that are maybe I would say 30 meters from here because when I came down this road I saw these impalas and they were just in the thicket in front of where Tingane is now. So you can see look he's busy stalking so he's going into stalking mode and he's getting himself nice and low and he's in a great position because the wind is blowing towards him and the fact of the matter is that the grass is really long so it's going to be very very interesting to see how he goes. Now I'm going to try just keep forward I don't want to ruin the hunt for him but look at that there he is on his tummy. So let's just see if we can get in here. So there we go, look at his body posture is completely different now. He's gone flat, his ears are quite low to the ground and he's watching what's going on and just making sure that he can see the impalas and staying very, very still because he doesn't want to move too much and the impalas then spot him. But what's nice for him is that he's got the grass and he's got the trees in front of him that is going to be breaking up his outline and making it very, very difficult for anybody to be able to see him. So it's going to be an interesting little sort of period and see whether or not he can actually get any closer. The problem is, is that if those impalas move in any way, ah, there we go, welcome back Kirsty. so Kirsty's back in my ear now, so I can actually hear final control again, which is lovely, so now I can hear all of your questions. Now remember, if you do have any questions and you are a new viewer and you want to know things about the leopard, you've already seen in Vula, the other big male that we see, and now this is Tingana, you can send your questions through to hashtag Safari Live, but look at the way he's so interested and look at how he's putting his paws very delicately. And like I said, the impalas are right here. They're not far at all. We can't see them from where we are. But I know when I came past that they were sitting just off the road here. So they're not very, very far at all. And look at his posture. You can see those floating collarbones now as the whole body is dropping low down. So he can get his profile as low as possible. And there's that collarbone sticking right up. So they have this ability to be able to go right down on their tummy, yet their legs can still move because their collarbone is not attached like ours is. And it's a very, very different sort of anat anatomical structure than what we've got as humans. And there he's just disappearing behind the tree. Now, I'm not going to move because, unfortunately, he is very, very close to these impalas. And like I say, we don't want to disrupt his hunt, and I don't want him to be in any sort of compromised position and we don't want to chase the impalas or give the leopard away so we're trying to give it as a fair hunt as possible and I'm hoping that he's going to kind of sneak forward and we'll then hear if he starts to chase you'll hear the galloping of hooves or alternatively if he gets spotted before he can chase you're going to hear the snorting of these impalas and it's going to be a very sort of vocal affair from here though if he doesn't manage to catch anything I'm pretty sure he's going to go to Red Dam which is not too far away and maybe he'll go lie there and have a drink for us which will be great now, I can't see him anymore. They, wait, there he goes. So he's just jogging now. You can see uh, the impalas have seen him. So I think he was trying to get into a point where he could just reposition, but the impalas saw him. So you can hear that snorting sound, which is like what we heard earlier when we were looking at those impalas and they all exploded out of the bush and ran away. It's the exact same sound. And it's because they've now spotted the leopard and they're telling everybody, we've seen this leopard. Be careful, there's an predator here. And now he's going to carry on. But what we're going to do is just try and follow him. Ultimately, we do have some of other vehicles that are with us. And these are some of the commercial vehicles because we are in an area where we do have commercial properties. Um, and they have guests that come from all over the world. Ah, Susie, you're wondering how often they hunt a day. Well, Susie, it depends on their sort of success rates, but if they're successful, then generally it'll just be once for sometimes even as much as a week-long period. So here he's calling. That's him just expressing his disdain at these impalas shouting at him. Um, but other than that, if they were to be hunting, 
it's not always every day. You find, sometimes find that leopards will go on a territorial patrol and they'll spend sort of two, three days patrolling their territory and actually not hunt at all. Are you going to call for us again? Oh, it's got, his head is itchy. Um, but generally, I mean, I've seen a female leopard once in a day in the time that I followed her, which is about four hours. She must have hunted, I reckon it was probably about nine, ten times in that space that we followed her through the period of the day and so how many times she hunted outside of that I'm not quite sure. You must remember that a leopard success rate is not very high and um, most of the cats out here while they are incredibly efficient and they can have all the skills to be able to do it the prey items are also very aware of their surroundings they know what's going on they know that there is a leopard and predators out here and their senses. So that's him just territorially vocalizing to tell everybody that this is his area, his territory, and that you must stay out of it. So that's why he's making that noise. He's also just telling the impalas that I've heard you shout at me. So here we go, he's going straight to Red Dam. So Reese, I think it was Reese. Sorry, the comms are not very good. So Reese, if I get your name wrong, I do apologise. And I think you asked where, what the size difference is between Tingana and Mvula. Well, Tingana is definitely a lot taller than what Mvula is. Mvula is not the sh uh, tallest leopard, but he is quite sort of squat. And in his heyday, when Mvula was younger, he was a very broad-chested animal. He had a very broad sort of chest area, big head, and that's what his kind of traits was. And he was a very sort of tough-looking leopard. Tingana is slightly taller in the shoulders, but I don't think he's nearly as broad around the shoulder area from sort of the chest depth. I just want to see where he's going to go from here because I don't want to cut him off. But I'm pretty sure you can see this is the damn wall in front of us. And there he's doing a bit of scent marking. So he's just busy scraping his back legs and urinating. And then hopefully he's going to go over the damn wall for us and pose beautifully on the top of the damn wall. So let's just go around and position ourselves. It might just be a little bit that we have to wait for him to pop up, but I'm pretty sure he is going to come this way. You can see that there's a little path that goes up onto the damn wall, so we should be in perfect place to see him. And we're going to get him at eye level, which is always the most amazing thing. When you get a leopard sitting staring at you at eye level, it is quite something. Now, there is also a hippo here. Hello, hippo. It's all happening now. We've gone from very little, very quiet, sedate afternoon to everything happening all at once. Now there's Tingana. He's just popping up in the most beautiful backlit conditions. Look at all the clouds and the sun setting in the background. And there he comes over the dam wall. Is that not spectacular? Absolutely amazing. But like I was saying, so Mvula is actually slightly smaller than Tingana. Tingana is a little bit bigger. And I reckon Tingana and Mvula might have a little run in tonight because where Mvula is, is on a, one of Tingana's territorial marches. And from here, he often goes straight into Juma and he goes and checks exactly where Mvula is. So I think Mvula has got a bit of a problem. He might have to be a bit careful tonight and hope that Tingana doesn't walk down that road because otherwise he's going to be found. And being that Tingana is the territorial male at the moment and much bigger than what he is and a little bit younger he will chase Mvula away and then we'll end up with a sort of situation where Mvula is going to run so hopefully Mvula will be clever enough just to stay quiet and hopefully the hyenas don't make too much noise and Tingana then doesn't find him but look at his tummy you can see he's lots of skin there that's just flapping so Tingana is probably quite hungry I would imagine he is looking for food we saw him now stalking that it was impalas so I'm sure if he finds food, he is definitely going to try hunt them. Isn't that amazing? Like I say, it's just something special about being at the same sort of level as a leopard and being looking into their eyes from their eye level is just absolutely spectacular. And look at that coat. Is that coat not amazing? We are being thoroughly spoiled. Now, I wouldn't have expected him to be so vocal at this time of the day generally leopards aren't that vocal until sort of early evening that's when you start to hear them a little bit more but he's definitely got quite a bit of sort of vocal range going at the moment now the problem is is where he's going is quite difficult to find him again because we can't cross this water hole we used to be able to drive straight across but now it's all been flooded so what we're gonna have to do is go round and going around is not going to be easy to find him again the nice thing though is that he is making a lot of noise so we can find him through his call. 
But isn't that amazing? Look at that camouflage as he disappears. Absolutely incredible. Right, so from one amazing male leopard who's 